the word. It's the, your whole life depends on what you put in your heart. The degree to what you keep your heart full of the word. Yes. Mm -hmm. Determines whether you'll walk in victory or defeat. Wow. Whether you'll enjoy days of heaven on earth or days that are something else entirely. Look at that. Look at that. And let me ask you guys a question. You take a great, thank you, Jeanette. I'm uh, I'm leaving this uh, with the message because there's a lot of Proverbs today. You take a great. You know you picked up a grape from the store. And you squeeze that grape. Now it's under pressure. You squeeze that grape. And you hold a spoon under the, the grape that you're squeezing. And the juices drop into the spoon. What are you going to get in that, in that spoon from that grape? Somebody Thank answer you. me. What's going to end up in that spoon? Seeds. Not seeds. What's going to come in that spoon from squeezing the grape? Juice. Juice. Right. right. Juice. And what's the juice going to taste like? Beans. Huh? Beans. Yeah. Right. What's inside of you? What's inside of you when life brings pressure? That's what's going to come out of you. If you act sour, you got to go to God and ask God why. What's in there that's causing you to react in a sour way? If you react full of anger, you got to go to God and say, Lord, what's going wrong inside of me that when I'm under pressure, I just get angry word but one thing we have to know when life brings pressure let me get what you, is in you under pressure comes out if you squeeze a hot dog hard enough what pops out of that hot dog and oozes out of the sides as it rips tears and, and blows is the ground meat that's inside of it so my question to you, as we get into the word, what comes out of you when you are under pressure? When life squeezes down on you, what comes out? You ever eat bad food? As we go to Proverbs chapter 3. You ever eat bad fruit, food, and while you're eating the bad food, your stomach starts churning and burning and going through all kind of changes. Next thing you know, you got to take a quick run, a quick pit, pit stop, right? And you want to hurry up and get up out of there too. Well, that's what happens in us. When life hits us in the wrong direction and it turns our stomach. Do you know that with the Holy Ghost, with the grace of God, with the holiness of God controlling you and you using the power God gave you to use self-control, do you know you can still be sweet under pressure? You can smell like a rose under pressure. Because what goes in must come out. Input, output. All right. Now, we are going to read Proverbs chapter 3. We're going to do a lot of reading. And I'm only going to speak as God leads. Because all I got was, who God's the scripture. And I believe some of us, there are times when God loads me up with scripture. Because some of you may not have opened the Bible since last Saturday when we gathered last weekend. All right. My son, starting at verse 1. Forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days 
and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, not some, not a few, not most. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Now, this is what I want to say real quick on that. Years ago, I like to give life examples. Years ago, my husband said something to me. Milton had a very strong, authoritative voice. His voice filled the whole room. Everybody knew when Brother Milton was in the room. And he would call me sometimes. I could see my friends getting annoyed when he called me. But why he got to call her like that? Well, what they did not know when I had the church in Altadena, but I did because God gave me understanding was there were times when he called me with the most demanding tone. That meant, Pat, I'm scared I'm going to have an accident out here in public. Get me to the bathroom, please. He wasn't demanding my services. He was scared. And when he was scared of being embarrassed, he sounded mean and demanding. But because God gave me understanding, I did not get angry with Milton and fuss at him for talking to me like that. Watch your tongue when you call my name. You don't have to sound like that. See, you can use every situation in life and determine yourself by your reaction how you are going to flavor it. Is it going to end up being a sweet conclusion, a sweet, peaceful solution, or are you going to turn it into an explosive that makes a mess everywhere you take it. Because every time you react, it's got to be drama. It's got to be anger, temper tantrums, attitude. All right. Now this is what Proverbs says in chapter 28. Chapter 28 it says, and I read, this is what God laid on my heart this morning. It just, I could just hear the whole sentence. And I said, okay. And this is what it says. Verse one, the wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. All right, now let's go there. What is that saying? Let's go with Proverbs. The wicked flee where no man pursues. Now, as I was joking with Lynette earlier, and I said, don't be jealous. If Lynette had been of a foul spirit and she had gotten angry with me earlier because I couldn't find her shoes that I borrowed last night and I misplaced them and she needs them right now. She could have said, look, you know what? Don't be playing with me. I'm prettier than you anyway. It could have turned into an argument. See, the wicked flee when no man pursue. What that means is, I could say anything or do anything. 
And if you're of a paranoid, oversensitive sense of a condition of mind, if you have a lot of bitterness and resentment from years gone past, you will overreact and get angry with me. You know, well, what are you trying to say? Well, you know, you didn't have to say it. You could have said it like that. Why, you got to front me off in public and blah, 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 blah. And I could have just been joking. But you're not playing because now it's not necessarily calling you wicked. What that means is when you have wickedness going on in your heart, wickedness is bitterness. Resentment, unforgiveness. Do you hear what I'm saying? Wickedness can be areas of oversensitivity, paranoia. Every rock you see has got to have a snake hiding up under it. What you trying to say? What you trying to say, Willis? Huh? 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 What you trying to signify? A little signifying monkey? Yeah. That's how. That's what I'm talking about. Life can come easy or life can be hard. Why? Because of how you're dealing with stuff in here. How you're dealing with those old wounds, those old runny sores. Everybody else sees a little toy snake. Everybody else may see a rope. Uh, swirling around on the floor, it got curled up, somebody dropped it. You look at it, you jump back, you see a snake. Yeah, you see a viper. It ain't even alive, it can't even hurt you. But in your mind, somebody put that thing there to hurt me. I know that ain't no play, ain't nobody playing, that's serious. They meant that. Well, you have to be careful because everybody you interact with is not out to get you. Now, the reason I'm dealing with this, this particular sentence, which I had no intention of, I was led to Proverbs 28 and I was going toward the end. God thundered to me this sentence right here, which showed me I was looking in the wrong spot of Proverbs 28. He wants to deal with this. Why are you so sensitive? Why is it that the people on your job and the people in your family and the neighbor down the street, why is it they always rub you the wrong way? Why is it you think when people are talking to you, they got something going on in the back of their head that is talking about you like you got a tail, two tails. Why is it you think that folks are in the church, folks in your family, folks down the street, folks on the job or on the phone talking about you behind your back? Why is it you feel that way? Hmm. See, that's when you have to get in front of the mirror and do a reassessment. See, when, when life brings pressure, see, like, like Jeanette and I, we tease each other all the time. We laugh at each other. I know she's always laughing at me. We laugh at each other. We tease each other. But we like each other. We love each other. So there are no hurt feelings because I know Jeanette is not out to hurt me. She knows I am not out to hurt her. So I can call her all kind of names that I wouldn't say in, in front of you guys. Mm -hmm. And she could call me all kind of goofy names that she wouldn't say in front of you guys. Well, we know where we're coming from. So listen, one time I was telling somebody just to share how those open runny wounds can really cause problems. I was telling somebody that I had preached at, um, at one of the services 
back in in 2008 2009 and i don't care who the preacher is we are never 100 percent right on hearing from god there are times we miss the mark by a mile y'all and we know it we just try to work with what we think we got now when i was bringing the word the whole time I was saying, God, I'm not hearing from you. I'm, this is one of my off days. I'm not, I'm not, I don't feel it. I'm not feeling you. I'm not, I don't feel like I'm hitting the mark. I feel like I'm missing it. And when I got through, I asked Milton and I told one of my friends this. One of my friends who has a lot of insecurities. Milton and I are very upfront with each other, so we tell each other anything, you know, we're just talking, you know, no harm done. And I asked him because I really wanted to know if it felt the same way to him as it felt to me. I already knew I was off. And I said, Milton, I said, does it feel like I'm missing the mark with the word? I mean, did it feel like that to you? How did it sound to you? He said, yeah, baby, I was kind of thinking, you know, well, maybe you didn't get it right this time. I said, yeah, same here. Now, most of the time when I would ask Milton if it sounded like it was on or off, he would tell me in a heartbeat, oh, baby, you did a good job. I learned a lot from that today. So I got a lot of support from him. But he wouldn't say anything if I didn't ask anything. And that's how I could tell. So when I said that to my friend, you know what my friend's response was? Well, he didn't have to say it like that. Well, I mean, did, that didn't make you upset? No, he, didn't, he wasn't doing me any harm. No, it's, it's like if he said, how does this color look on me? I said, no, 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 put the green away. It does you no good. It makes you look pale. That's not an insult to him. I want him to look his best. He's good looking to me. You know, so everything, every criticism, every every uh, admonishment, every word of encouragement, every word of um, any suggestion, it doesn't have to be that something's wrong with you. I don't know who this is for. I had no intention of dwelling on this this long. I don't know who this is for, but you guys know who you are. So what I want to say to you is continue to pursue God for that inner healing. Because this is what happens. This is something you look at down the future. You say, okay, who do I want to be? And you compare yourself to the word and you say, okay, um, I'm good there. Oh, I, I suck there. No, 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 no. I'm not doing good in that category at all. You know, and, and you go through and you reassess where you are. You kind of grade yourself, so to speak. Well, the purpose for that is growth. It's not to make you look down on yourself. It's to help you grow, help you know where you need to work on the most like taking your car to the mechanic. You're not insulted if the mechanic says your tires are worn out, you need no new tires. That's not a reflection on you. It's, this is how you be safe on the road. You need new tires. Because you don't want to get on the freeway at top speed and one of them babies blow on you. Then you and other people may get hurt or die. So it's a word for protection <sighs> wow. <laughs> okay. The bottom line is that's the same way we do with the word. We check ourselves comparing ourselves to the word of God. And if you really want to change, you'll work on it. Every time you feel that dander rising in the back of your collar, you feel that temperature rise and that hair stand up on end and you feel the claws coming out from your nail. <laughs> Yeah, okay, Lord, 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 you better call on God real quick. Because when you squeeze the grape, baby, you do not want poison coming out of that grape.
getting all over everybody and everything. That's pressure. Life has pressure, y'all. It's what you do with that pressure that shows you what's in here. Now, all right. Woo! <laughs> okay, let's get back to the word, y'all. Wow. So when you're dealing with interpersonal relationships, I, I can't let it go yet. When you notice a husband and wife, whether it's the male or the female that's abusive, nine times out of ten, the one that's doing the slapping, the cussing, the disrespecting out in public is the most insecure. And what they end up doing is putting down their, their, uh, their mate, their husband, their wife. They put them down in public because they need to feel big. They feel small. So they make their significant other feel small. And that way they can rise above and feel like, okay, see, See, I got it together. See that? Yeah. See, I ain't no pushover. I ain't nobody sucker. As Lynette says, you ain't going to punk me. Will you? No, 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 no. Nobody's punking you. You're punking them. Why are you punking them? Because you're insecure and you're so afraid that you attack before the person even has a chance to think of attacking you. You attack them. And what you end up becoming is abusive. You end up becoming mean, bitter, hard to get along with. Nobody wants to tango with you because it always has to be an explosive moment of drama. So you can end up being the drama queen or the drama king. Got to be careful about that kind of stuff. You can have life coming at you sweetly and have heaven on earth. Or you can end up being hell on wheels for everybody else around you. And it's determined on whether you're going to live in your flesh by the dictates of your flesh. Or are you going to live by the dictates of the Holy Ghost, by the word of God, by the character of Jesus Christ himself? Hmm. Choose you this day whom you will serve. As for me in my house, I am determined to serve the Lord. I may not do it perfectly. But every effort in me is leaning in that direction at every given moment. Now, not saying I never fail, but that's my aim every day, all day. All right. Woo! All right, here we go. Let's go to mm, mm, mm. Isaiah chapter 1. Yeah, Isaiah chapter 1, this is where God makes us take responsibility for our behavior. Isaiah chapter 1, starting at verse 11. Now, these are hard words, but it doesn't stay hard because he always invites people to come in a little closer. Come a little bit closer. Check this out. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full. That means he's up to here. For some of you who don't get the King James, he's up to here. Fed up, baby. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fed of fat beasts. 
and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goes. It's all your sacrifices for the Lord. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? It's like Lynette called me this morning and she said, I'm at the front door. Now, if I had opened the door with this, I would have been like, who invited you to my house? That's what God is saying. Who invited you here? Who asked you to come? Who required this of you? So he says, mm, when you come to appear before me, who has required this in your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblation. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons, the Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Hmm. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hated. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. It's like I'm sick and tired of that mess. See, a lot of us, we come to church and we think we're sincere, and many of us are. But some of us hate to use this word, Lord. Some of us don't realize what hypocrites we really are. I've been there. I know what it's like to have those hypocritical moments. We all have those moments from moment to moment. Sometimes we got to fake it until we make it. Whew. 15, and when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes, cease to do evil, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Listen, verse 19. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Listen, listen, listen. When I was a little kid, just to kind of give you a picture of what God's trying to show you. When I was a little kid, my father used to tell me, I remember these talks. <laughs> My father used to have these long talks, you know. And he said, you know one thing I can't stand, Patty? I can't stand a user, a liar, and I can't stand a taker. A user, a liar, and a taker. I can't stand those kind of people. And he would explain to me what each one was, the characteristics, right? Well, he told me, he said, I'm going to tell you this. He said, if you do something you know you had no business doing, you are much better off and much safer coming to me before I find out. Don't let me find out about it. See, my father, he'll heat up my little hiney real quick. I remember I got three spankings for him, from him, and he laid me on his lap, got the belt in hand, and whack a yak attack on my bottom. Mm -hmm. So I knew not to play with brother man because he did not play with me. He played. He was silly like I get my silliness from him. I'm serious. I get all my name calling, my silliness. I get it from him. But when he was serious, it wasn't playtime no more. That's like the lion that roared in the forest. Everybody hushed. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So what I noticed with him was if I went to him first. I'm painting a picture of the Lord. Just, just ride with me on this for a minute. If I went to him and said, Pop, 
I need to tell you something I did wrong. Blah, 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 blah. He'd sit me down. He'd lecture me. Okay, Patty, thank you for being honest. That was a booty whooping I didn't get, y'all. I didn't get the booty whooping. And I noticed with God, the more honest we are with him, the fewer the booty whoopings we have to get in life. What does he say in his word? If you cover your sin, I will expose it. But if you expose, I will cover. Now, think about it this way. None of us are perfect. We all have shortcomings. Some of us deal with them on a daily basis. Some of us struggle with them and battle with them, but we're trying. And some of us turn a blind eye, a deaf ear, and we stick our head in the sand. God understands I'm human. God knows my heart. We don't fear God. We don't care. We're saved, and that's all we need to worry about. Don't get in my business. Don't talk about my little fleshly weaknesses. Just leave me alone. Leave me be. I leave you be. I do me. You do you. And we don't want to hear words of correction. We don't want to hear how to polish up our act. We don't want to hear how to get our hearts right with God because we don't want the constructive criticism. We don't want to hear it. It doesn't come across as a loving admonition. It comes across as a put down, as a, a personal attack. You embarrassing me in front of everybody. Ain't nobody looking at you. They looking at themselves. If I tell you, you got two tires in the back. No, if I tell you, you got one tire in the back, one tire in the front, and they're both bald, and you got a brand new beautiful car, and I say, you better get them things changed before you have a blowout. I don't want to see, I don't want to have to come to the hospital and visit you up there with broken legs and you fighting for your life. You going to get insulted with me? You going to take that as a put down? Because I'm, I'm looking out for you? You going to look around and say, oh, everybody's looking at me like I'm all messed up? No. No, y'all. That's love, looking out. When somebody tells me that, I'm, I'm thank you for looking out. Thank you for that. I wasn't even aware. I didn't know they were that bad. Thank you. There's nowhere in that package that even insinuates an insult. See, life can be a journey or even an adventure for some or for you that have those issues life can be a constant battle constant battle everything's hard everything's dark everything is painful does it really have to be or is it the way you see it? When I used to drive for RTD <clears throat> years ago, it was Rapid Transit District. I drove the city bus. I liked it at first because I was good at driving that bus. I could maneuver that baby through the eye of a needle. I was good with my bus. But what I, I started getting bitter about different things, the way the company ran things, the backing we didn't get, the, the you know, the, the constant scrutiny. And it was a lot of things I didn't like. And I started getting bitter about it. I was not saved, y'all, at all when thinking about the Lord. And I remember sitting at the table every day, crying, trying to eat my breakfast because I did not want to go. Now, I was getting paid well. The buses were in good condition. 
I was driving through to, you know, normal neighborhoods. Wasn't anything dangerous about the neighborhoods. I was driving through downtown LA, Hollywood, Pasadena, different areas like that, Glendale, Burbank, Highland Park, Echo Park, all of that. I didn't have any real issues with anybody. I wasn't threatened, but I was the issue. So what ended up happening? And do you know right now, if I had kept that job for at least 10 to 15 years, I'd have a sweet retirement right now. Y'all wouldn't be talking about this poor widow living on 900 and something dollars a month. I would have been sailing off of that money. But because of my emotions, I ended up not having a retirement because I gave them one day's notice. I'm out of here. I'm gone. Sick of this crap. Now somebody else looking at me wish they had my kind of job. But no, I'm sick of this crap. Everything was ugly. I was catching the cold every other week because I didn't want to go to, 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 to work. I was I was getting a sore ankle and a, 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 my back would hurt and my skin would hurt and my hair would hurt and everything would come up so that I wouldn't have to do battle on the job. I was one miserable soul, y'all. Honestly, I was. Number one, I didn't have the Lord in my life. I wasn't leaning on him. He couldn't keep me in perfect peace because I didn't have Jesus in my heart. I was full of turmoil. So life for me was hard. And I realized I was the hard one, not my life. So my question to you, is your perspective making the pressures of life, the vicissitudes of life, the challenges of life, the conflicts between individuals, is that what's in you making it 10 times more painful? And if it is, and you can see it for what it is, Come, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. See, that's not just for unsaved people. Those of us who are born again Christians always have to battle the flesh. That's the sinful side. So we have to go to God, reason together. Lord, show me what's wrong with me. Why do I get an attitude every time somebody does this? Every time somebody looks at me like that? Every time I walk in a room and I start expecting the worst? Every time and I start looking for the arguments and starting the arguments? What is wrong? Is there a rage inside of me? Is there something crippled inside of me that needs healing? You don't have to worry about all the crap going on out there. You got enough brewing right in here. And God has his hands full dealing with all that. You ain't got to worry about the second coming and the, and the, the mark of the beast and all that. You got enough to deal with in here. Get that dealt with first. And you will find as God heals you, and I'm telling you from experience, as God heals you, and he will, he longs to heal you. Read Isaiah 61. He longs to heal the broken, the bruised, the wounded, the crippled. Listen, as he heals you on the inner man, Less things in life will annoy you. Less things will aggravate you. Your patience won't grow so short. Your fuse won't be so short. You won't explode at the drop of a hat. Do you hear what I'm saying? Ask God to walk you through. You won't run, turn tail, and panic at the first 
sharp sound, thinking it's a gun, when somebody just dropped their books on the, on the floor. <laughs> Ask God to heal that thing in you that turns a silk purse into a sow's ear, that turns a rope into a viper. Think about it. That turns a warning, a loving warning, into a, a, a criticism and a humiliating experience where everybody's looking at you and you look like a fool. No, it all comes from here. Once this starts getting changed, the same thing that had you flipping out before, you will see it for what it is and you'll say, all those other times that I did, oh, that was me. Oh, wow. Boy, once God gets in there and does the healing, you don't have anything to react to because there's no more fuel to fuel the fire. Amen. Seek God while he may be found. Call on his name, y'all. He can help you heal quicker than you getting over a cold. God can work quickly and thoroughly. But you got to be on hot pursuit for that healing. You don't want to limp your way through life. You don't want to hobble your way through life causing damage everywhere you go, knocking things over, breaking stuff, breaking people. No. You don't want to become abusive. Try not to be abused. The wicked flee where no man pursues. Don't be like that. Don't be that person. God can heal it. He understands it. But he loves you too much to leave you that way. And you got to trust him enough to take all that dirty stuff to the Lord. I was an emotional wreck. I was the emotional cripple, y'all. I was the ultimate. That's how I can say, I know what it's like to live crippled. And I know what it's like to live whole. I know what it's like to be tore up from the flow up. And I know what it's like for God to heal and deliver me and free me up. I'm telling you, it's a big difference. And it ain't what's going on out there, it's what's going on in here. Amen? Amen. God will make you fit for the battle. And the battle won't feel like a war all the time. Sometimes the battle will feel like a picnic. Because he will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stay on him. God bless you. Be encouraged, y'all.